The Romance of the Rancho. Westwood, 1820. Ex-soldier settles on Rancho. Westwood, 1852. Last Indian raid on Southland Rancho. Westwood, 1929. Great university founded on Old Rancho. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful and romantic history of our Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to tell the facts about a part of the Southland rich in the romance of the ranchos. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles has asked me to say a word now about a different kind of insurance. Insurance for victory in our nation's war against ruthless enemies. Your purchases of United States defense bonds and stamps constitute a form of insurance that will provide protection against loss of possessions more valuable than property or life itself. America has never lost a war. And with the United people behind its war effort, it won't lose this one. Unite now for victory by buying more and more United States defense bonds and stamps. And now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, señoras y señores. First, I want to call your attention to a change in time for this program. Starting next week, The Romance of the Ranchos will come to you an hour and a half earlier at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. That's 6 o'clock next Wednesday evening and every Wednesday evening thereafter. Make a note of it, will you? And now tonight, we're going to trace the romantic history of that part of our Southland around the communities of Westwood Hills, Westwood Village, Holmby Hills, and Bel Air. This land was once the great Rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires, a region rich in the romance of the ranchos. The history of this land began when Governor Felipe de Neve, in 1781, decreed the founding of a pueblo near the Pocincula River, a town to be called El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora la Reina de los Angeles. He also provided the population for that otherwise lifeless spot of Southern California. Up from Sinaloa came a tiny band of soldiers and settlers to found and build a village which was to grow into the great city of today. There were only a handful of them with their families. One of them was the soldier Maximo Annalise. Oh! 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 Sir, this is it. See me, amigo. This is the site. You mean to tell me that tomorrow we bring our families from the Mission San Gabriel and listen to a speech? Then just call this barren, dusty spot home and stay here? See, <laughs> see, si, si. as soon as the ceremonies are over, we begin oh. to build our houses. And in the meantime, our families sleep on the ground in the dust. Oh, yeah. come, oh. come, mi amigo. You must not be discouraged. Any new venture looks bad at first. Wait until we have a few adobes up around the plaza, a few corrals and stores. Then it will begin to look like home. Ah, it is a stupid idea anyway. Out here in the middle of a wilderness, nobody, nothing around. Oh, but you are wrong. There are many Indian villages near here and the mission. Ah, the mission. If the padres want to live in the wilderness and preach to the Indians, let them. But why should I have to? Oh, you do not understand. Can you not see? Can't you look out across these beautiful plains and see the country that could be? Fertile orchards, great herds roaming the grazing land, a thriving town, ships stopping at the bay, bringing goods to us, taking hides and tallow from us to every country of the world. Ah, that is a glorious sight. Mother de Dios, this heat has touched your brain. You're completely loco. You're seeing things that don't exist and never shall. Oh, no. No, you are wrong. They will exist. We will make them exist. 
Ah, this may be a barren, hot, dusty, lonely spot now, but, but wait, mi amigo, wait. Someday El Pueblo de Los Angeles will be a place to be reckoned with. The prediction of Maximo Alanis was to come true many years after his death. Slowly, the little Pueblo grew, but those early years were full of hardship, and there were some who could not weather them. One of these was Senora Alanis. After her death, Maximo lived on in the little house in the Pueblo. For several years more, he carried on his duties as a soldier in the fast-growing Pueblo de los Angeles. But age was creeping up on him, and one day, he was called to see the captain who had just come from Monterey. Yes, Capitan. Uh, you sent for me? Si, senor. Sit down. I... I have done nothing wrong. <laughs> no, no, of course not, senor. In fact, it is to compliment you that I have sent for you. Oh. See, si. You have been a soldier here for many years, have you not? Oh, a trifle, see, si, some 30 years. And your service to your country has been unexcelled. Gracias. I, I have tried to do my best. But, senor, are you not a little tired of the army? Hmm? Tired? See. Si. You're not getting any younger, you know. And most of our men feel that they have done their duty when they reach your age. I know. You mean I'm getting too old? Useless. Not at all. A man with your vast experience is always needed. But you have served more than enough time to entitle you to a pension. Pension? Uh, you wish to pension me off? <laughs> no, no, Alanis. Do not jump at conclusions. As long as you wish to remain in the service, you will be welcome. Senor Capitan, you... You wish to discharge me, pension me off like an old horse. I have outlived my usefulness. Oh, Alanis, stop it. I am doing nothing of the kind. I did not mean to hurt your feelings by what I said. I, I thought you would be happy. Happy? To be discarded as too old? Once and for all. I am not trying to discard you as too old. You are not too old. You may remain a soldier for another 30 years if you wish. Gracias. But most of your comrades in arms have asked for pensions after that many years. But you, you go on serving and asking nothing. You see, why shouldn't I? I am happy. But, Alanis, after so many years of faithful work, you deserve some rest and some reward. Reward? See, si. the government wishes to reward you for your fine work. <laughs> and you do not wish to take it. But the pension, is that a reward? See, si, most men think so. And that is the spirit it is given in. The government frees you from work, pays you eight pesos a month, and you have nothing to worry about for the rest of your life. Nothing to worry about. What would I do with myself? No, no work to do. Eight pesos to live on. And what would I do? How, how would I fill up the days? Oh, you would find plenty to do once you got used to it. Besides, there will be the land to take care of. Land? What land? Oh, I did not tell you. No. Well, besides the pension, you are entitled to a square league of public land anywhere you choose. Oh. See, si, on it you keep your cattle, build a house, become a ranchero. Just like Sergeant uh, Verdugo and Dominguez and all the others. So you see, there will be plenty to do. You have a new life before you as a great ranchero. The government wishes to do this for me? See, si, it is no more than right after the fine service you have rendered. Oh, senor capitan, I am overwhelmed. It is too much. I, I thought... Oh, I am sorry, capitan. I... I thought you were trying to get rid of me. <laughs> oh, no, no, senor. No, we shall be sorry to lose you. But I'm sure that you'll go on serving your country as a great ranchero. See, si, see, si, mi amigo, it is fine, but now that I have my pension, what am I to do? Do? Just sit in the sun and enjoy life. What more do you want? Oh, to a man accustomed to action, just sitting becomes unbearable. I should like to try it just once. I uh, pension... Oh, the pension is not that much. You cannot live like a prince, you know. That is all the more reason for you not to move around too much. Action whets the appetite. Mm. Your pension is plenty if you sit in the sun and don't get too hungry. <laughs> you are hopeless, mi amigo. Oh, but this is no joking matter. I, I, I am serious. See, si, I know. But why, if you want action, don't you go out and find your rancho that you have coming? Oh, 
I have looked all around the Pueblo. There's no land close by that is not spoken for. See, si, I know. But there is plenty of fine, rich land just a few leagues away. Ah, si, but I am an old man, lonely. My, my children growing up, my, my wife gone. I've lived all my life in the Pueblo. I, I do not enjoy the prospect of going out to a lonely adobe in the hills to spend the rest of my days. And my friend, home. get married. Raise another family. Huh? What are you saying? Of course, you are not so old. All this talk of pensions has made you feel old. You still have many years of life ahead of you. In fact, a whole new life. Look at it in that way, mi amigo. Oh, but marry again. After my wife died, I... I knew your wife too, senor. And she would not wish you to be lonely. If she could tell you, I'm sure she would want you to marry again and be happy. I, perhaps you are right. See, mi amigo, perhaps you are right. And so Massimo Alanis did not close his lonely heart to romance And presently he found the love and comfort he sought On February 2nd, 1818, at the Mission San Gabriel He and Senorita Juana Reyes were married And the old soldier started a new life and a new family For a time they made their home in the adobe of Senora Alanis Which stood on the land east of Alameda Street near the Los Angeles River But soon... Disaster threatened. Cosimo, oh, look at it. Coming up to the very foundation. Oh, do not worry, mi carida. As soon as I have these few clothes packed, we shall get away to the hill. We, we shall be safe. See, si, but our home, it will be swept away in the flood. And our lovely orchard, they are ruined and our cattle drawn. See, si, we shall not be able to save much. But what are we to do? I don't know, except that we shall not come back here. These spring rains would flood us out every year. I... I must find a home for us, a home that will be safe. But where, Maxim? Oh, I do not know, but I, I still have a parcel of land coming from the government. And now, mi carida, I must find it and claim it. And so Massimo Alanis set out on a search for his rancho to be. With his old friend he was riding one day. Oh, me amigo, we are almost four leagues from the Pueblo. I, I am dying of this heat. Never mind the heat, me amigo. But thought this is wilderness. There is nothing here and no one. That is all right. No one will bother you, and there will be no arguments over the land. Oh, but amigo mio, so far from the town and, and so hot. Maximo, either you want to be a ranchero or you do not. Oh, but... If you do, then you must give up the Pueblo and come out to live where there is land for cattle and orchards. If you do not, then stay in the Pueblo and be content. Oh, no, if you were not my friend, I should be angry with you, but uh, <laughs> since you are my friend, <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Gracias, mi amigo. No, but I am so hot and tired, and I still haven't seen anything that looks good. Ah, mi amigo, let's, let's turn back and try another direction tomorrow. Now, wait. We're almost to the top of this hill. I want you to see what lies over it. Uh, just a minute and we will be there. Come. Oh, very well, but I can tell you I won't like it. It's hot and sticky. I like the cool shade of the Pueblo. It is hot there, too. You can have your shade anywhere. Now, stop quibbling. Oh, uh... hey, here we are at the top. Whoa. Whoa. Uh... Whoa. Now, look at that. Santa Maria. Oh, it is a pretty view. See, with it. It's beautiful. Look, there in the distance, you can see the ocean. Look at that plain, pasture land for the country. Mi amigo, do you feel it? Do you feel what? The breeze, the cool breeze. See, yeah, it is from the ocean. It is like that all the time. Even when it is hottest in the Pueblo, the breeze from the ocean is cool. Oh, it is like heaven. I feel refreshed already. Forget the temperature, mi amigo. Look at this land. It'll make a wonderful arancho. Si, si, it will. Eh, you like it? Oh, of course. Did you not want me to like it? Si, but you have hardly even looked at oh, it. Oh, I do not have to look at it, mi amigo. I can feel it. Any place that has cool breezes like this is wonderful. I shall take it. I shall live here. Because of the breeze? Si, si. And I shall call my rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires. Saint Joseph of the Pleasant Breezes. If you sell a parcel of real estate or borrow money and offer real estate as security, your prospective purchaser or the bank or other financial institution you're dealing with will probably require that you furnish a policy of title insurance. 
When you buy real estate or make a loan secured by it, you have every reason to insist on receiving the same protection, and here's why. Let us suppose that you're buying a parcel of land from John Jones, and that you have a complete record title of the land from the original United States patent down to the present owner, revealing no defect in the title of any of the pre previous owners. Now suppose that one of the deeds in this chain of title had been forged, or that one of the owners had been a miner who could not legally give a good deed, or that one of the deeds had been issued on behalf of a corporation by an officer who had not been legally authorized to do so, or that one of the owners who gave the deed was actually married and his wife did not join in its execution. These are some of the matters constituting possible title defects, which even the most careful examination of records might not reveal. And yet, any one of them might jeopardize the title you're acquiring. A policy of title insurance from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles will protect you against these defects. It was in 1820 that Don Maximo Alanis found his rancho, San Jose of the Pleasant Breezes, and applied for his grant. Then, without delay, he took his cattle to the new pasture land, for the community grazing tracts of the Pueblo were overcrowded. He began to build an adobe house in a grove of sycamores near the present site of the Marymount School, just north of the campus of UCLA. By spring, it was finished, and he loaded his family into a rumbling carreta and started on the journey to their new home. A distance of some 13 miles, it takes a matter of minutes today. But in 1821, the trip consumed almost a week. Not only because there were no roads, only trails, and the two-wheeled cart with wheels made of imperfectly rounded slabs of tree trunks made slow progress. But the main reason... Massimo, eh? there is a house. See, si, it is the home of Don Manuel. Bueno, we've been traveling all of two hours. I'm tired. Carita. You mean we should stop? Si, de seguro. Oh, but I do not like Don Manuel. I know, Massimo, but we cannot pass them by. You know that? He would never get over the insult. But why must we stop at every house all the way to the rancho, whether we like the people or not? Now, Massimo, you know as well as I that it would be a breach of custom if we did not. Oh. They are probably all prepared for us. Food and music and everything. See, si, and we shall have to go through another fiesta. We have been away from home two days, and already we have been to three fiestas. See, si. and this will be another. And they will want us to stay two, three days. At best, we will not get away until morning. What is the difference, mi querido? I am anxious to get to our new home. A few days will not make a difference. There is plenty of time. See, si, of course, mi querida. It is not a question of time, but... I am hot. I want to get to the cool breezes of the rancho. We shall get there soon enough, mi querido. After three or four more days... And fiestas. Time meant nothing. And the traveler must stop at every house along his route for a visit. There was always food and music and dancing. There was rest and hospitality for as long as they would stay. But finally... Alanis was in his new home, his family safely established there, and one by one, the pleasant years rolled by. They were prosperous, peaceful years, marred only by an occasional argument over water rights. But then, about 1840, when Maximo Alanis was indeed an old man, a real trouble threatened. Maximo, mi amigo, it is true. Sepulveda has actually claimed part of your land. No. I cannot believe that Don Francisco would do this to me. Perhaps it is a mistake. But he has included part of the Rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires in the map of his land to be sent to the governor. This has never been part of his Rancho San Vicente. You know that, mi amigo. Si, si, I know it. So do most people around here. But does the governor up north know it? Ah, uh, si, that is the trouble. He has never given me full title to the land. Even though they gave me possession of it for my services as a soldier, I... I never received any proper title. And for all the governor knows, this might be Sepulveda's last. Si. But, mi amigo, you must do something right away. Mm -hmm. If you do not, your rancho might be taken away from but you. But I have lived here for 20 years. Everybody knows that. More than that, what can I do? Do? You must petition the authorities right away. Mm -hmm. Ask for a proper title to this land. See, si. See, si, I will do it immediately. Mo 
most excellent commandante general of this department of California, Don Manuel Mitchell Torena. I, Jose Massimo Alanis, a citizen of the town of Rosario and a resident in this city for a trifle of 60 years, come before your excellency praying in the following terms. Most excellent sir, will your excellency pardon my lack of words and boldness? I was given possession of my land, the Rancho... Massimo Alanis petitioned the governor for proper title to the Rancho San de Buenos Aires. To his aid came many prominent citizens of the Pueblo to swear that it was truly his land. Among them were Antonio Maria Lugo, Vicente Sanchez, Augustin Machado, Anastasio Avila. Which has compelled me to come before your excellency with this petition. I trust in the power and authority of your excellency to grant me this title to the property, and I I swear I am without malice. I, I cannot sign my name. God and Liberty, Los Angeles, February 3rd, 1843, Massimo Alanis, who kisses your feet. Massimo's petition was successful, and at last he held full title to the Rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires. It was not till long afterward that the final rest came to the old soldier, and a new era was to start for the rancho. This was a land of Americans now, and one of them, Don Benito Wilson, was to come into possession of Buenos Aires about the year 1852. It was in that year, too, and on the rancho, which is now westward, that something happened which caused the early Southlanders a great deal of merriment. It was early in the morning when the Mayo Domo of Wilson's Rancho awoke to hear. Pedro! Pedro, are you awake? Uh, what is this, senor? Wake up, you stupid dog. Something is wrong. Uh, uh, what are the cattle bawling about? That is what I want to know. Look outside. See what it is. Oh, but, senor, it is dark. Open your eyes. It is past dawn. You can see. Uh, see, see. I shall look. Well, well, what is it? What is it? What do you see? Senor, Indians! Indians! What are you saying, man? See, Indians, they are stealing the cattle. It's an Indian raid. An Indian raid? Impossible. This is 1852, man. We haven't had an Indian raid in this section for years. No, Senor Wilson. But this is one. They were Mojaves. They come through Pass at Coenga. They stole 500 head of your cattle. We chased them. They came from Coenga? Si. But then they crossed several other ranchos to get to Buenos Aires. See, si. And they didn't steal any cattle anywhere else? No, Don Benito, only yours. Well, that means they, they deliberately went out of their way to steal my cattle. Maybe. But why? Haven't I always been their friend? Haven't I gone out of my way to help them? Spent my good time and energy acting as Indian agent just to help them? See, si. they call you stepfather of the Indians. And then they do this to me. Maybe why? because you are their friend. They do not like to steal from strangers. Eh? After all I've done... Why, if I ever catch them... Senor, you are angry with him? Uh, You said... Never mind what I said. For once in my life, I'm angry at them. If I can lay my hands on them, I'll cut out their hearts. Don't be I mean it. And I will catch them. Gather them in right away. Uh, After all I've done for them, they do this to me. Don Benito chased the mischievous Mojaves across the mountains, but in vain. That is what made the incident even more of a joke to the townspeople of Los Angeles. Seeing good-hearted old Don Benito hot on the trail of some of his beloved Indians, really angry for once in his life. But that was the last Indian raid on the rancho. And now, under American influence, its phenomenal growth began. In 1884, John Wolfskill bought the Rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires for something over $40,000. Three years later, after the Santa Fe Railroad came through, he was approached by a man. Mr. Wolfskill, I represent the Los Angeles and Santa Monica Land and Water Company. Ever heard of us? No, I haven't. Well, you will hear lots about it. We're organized to start a new town right around here. We'd be interested in buying your land. That is, if you don't want too much for it. Well, I'm not particularly interested in selling it. Probably ask a pretty good price. How about, uh, say, uh, $100 an acre? What? What? $100? 
Why, man, that'd come to almost $450,000. Yep. If that ain't enough, well, I could see my associates. Holy mackerel. 450000 Hey, Mr. Wolfskill, don't you feel well? <laughs> The elaborate plans of the Los Angeles and Santa Monica Land and Water Company to build the town of Sunset, near where Westwood Village is today, were unsuccessful. And Buenos Aires remained a rancho until about 1919, when Arthur Letts, founder of the Broadway department store in Los Angeles, bought it and started subdivision of the first unit of the area, Holmby Hills. Later, the Jans Investment Company handled the development of the land into the present beautiful communities. Then, in 1929, a portion of this property was chosen as the site of the great new University of California at Los Angeles. With a huge institution of learning came business and homes. And in the 12 years since then, the area with its communities of Westwood Village, Westwood Hills, Holmby Hills, and Bel Air have completed as phenomenal a growth as any in fast-growing California. From a grain field in 1919 to an area with almost 24,000 inhabitants, and many millions of dollars worth of building investments, such is the story of modern progress on Massimo Alinice's Rancho San Jose de Buenos Aires. And such is the romance of the ranchos. Frank Graham will be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. He also has a very important announcement to make to you. Tomorrow, Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles begins another calendar year of service to the community. A service which, briefly stated, consists of providing to all of you who deal in real property a prompt, efficient, and sound title service at rates that are decidedly lower than those prevailing generally in other parts of the United States. With every confidence in the future of the community and the nation, Title Insurance and Trust Company and its entire personnel join in extending to all of you Best wishes for a happy and prosperous new year in 1942. What's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, we're going to tell the romantic love story of a young American, Joseph Chapman, and the beautiful young senorita who saved his life. I know you'll want to hear it. So be sure to make a note of a change in time for this program. Next week, the romance of the ranchos moves up an hour and a half in time to the more convenient hour of 6 o'clock. That's next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Romance of the Ranchos will come back to you with the story of Joseph Chapman. So until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, extending my best wishes for the coming years to each one of you. Feliz Año Nuevo. And buenas noches, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Remember next week, Romance of the Ranchos comes to you at a new time, 6 o'clock on Wednesday, one hour and a half earlier. Bob Lamont speaking and bidding you good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.